Okay, hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On The Resume Off The Cuff. Today we have an awesome little sneak preview for you uh, before I do a full review. This is of course the new for 2020 Prospects Alpinist. In particular, this is the SBDC 087, which is this black dial model that does come on this uh, revised stainless steel bracelet. Uh, this is, of course, from the brand Seiko. They were founded back in 1881. They're Japanese in origin and now have factories throughout Asia. Uh, they actually cover all market segments from entry level to very high end. And as far as this type of watch goes, I would consider this an everyday watch. Some key common characteristics in design language you're looking for something you can wear every day. You're really just going to want that versatile blend of sporty and dressy attributes. Now, for this particular model in the uh, Prospects Alpinus, really this is an adventurer's watch uh, that is an extension of an original line dating all the way back to 1961. Uh, these are actually going for various different prices at the moment, uh, but essentially they should roughly translate to about $750, US and that is with a... Um, uh, and that's just retail, basically, the list price. You can find them anywhere ranging from around $630 all the way up to $900, and I'm sure you're going to see even more fluctuation as stock kind of becomes available, and then also as stock sells out. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a closer look. All right. As you can see, really handsome piece and actually quite a different dial than what you've seen from very recent uh, Alpinist watches. Now, uh, the other, there are a couple other options that are available right now. They all basically actually have different dials, but they also all have uh, different indices in comparison to this one. So this particular one is, I'd say, for me, at least my pick of the bunch. Um, I'm not going to get too much into comparisons and whatnot with the previous models. I'm going to go ahead and save that actually for uh, their own videos where I'll compare some of the design language changes, some of the, the you know the nuanced things as far as comparison with the dimensions and whatnot. But I will say that the case itself is actually still the same case as far as I can tell. It still has that 39 and a half millimeter diameter. Uh, what don't be confused because some places marketed them in the past the uh, as uh, 38 millimeters. Um, these have been uh, 39 and a half pretty much uh, for a long time now. The thickness is actually just a little bit thicker than the original version, but it's really just this case back, which is now a display case back uh, showing off that beautiful new movement there. Um, the lug to lug is still 46.3 about. And then, of course, it does have a nice mixture of brushed and polished finishes. Uh, as far as the crystal goes, it has changed slightly. It's still a flat sapphire, but now it has uh, this really useful cyclops. As you can see, it does magnify that date at 3 o'clock really, really well. And I got to say, I, for me at least, um, the uh, the clear anti-reflective coating on this crystal is working really, really well and probably better than any other Alpinist that I've had before. And, uh, you know, of course, the details may be a little bit foggy as far as if they all had uh, anti-reflective coatings or not. But I got to say this one uh, for me is, is uh, probably the most effective. You can see down here a little farther out. Of course, it is going to have a reflection on the studio light when it's directly there. But you can see there negotiating those reflections at a distance and a little closer it does a really fine job um so you know like i said uh, as the sarb uh you know 017 it does have the same case same thing uh, with the sp uh, B089, which was the blue US limited edition. So you're going to have the same case, uh, same compatibility, although the bracelet is uh, slightly different. Um, again, we'll talk about uh, that side of it in the full review as well as uh, future comparison videos. But as far as in hand, just to give you guys a nice look here, um, really beautifully done. You can see this has this nice bracelet that does taper down. Uh, to about 18 millimeters. It does have two micro adjusts and it does have a nice milled section here with contouring as well and they do fit uh, the wrist very very nicely. Uh, as far as this new movement goes 
uh, it actually, the biggest difference is it has 70 hours of power reserve uh, and one extra joule. So instead of 24 joules, it has 25. And instead of 50 hours, like the 6R15, this new 6R35 movement actually has 70 hours of power reserve, which is really nice. So uh, just about uh, three days worth of power reserve, which is really nice. It's actually been quite accurate since I've had it so far, uh, at right around uh, five plus five seconds a day and I'm hoping it'll slow down uh, a little bit and, and really get pretty close to uh, to a perfect as I keep wearing it. Uh, the nice thing is I don't have to keep wearing it uh, because it does have the longer power reserve and it actually does keep a charge quite well uh, and quite long. Now as you can see the applied indices and whatnot um, they are not loomed there are actually just little loom pips all around uh, on that kind of outer track there, uh, the handset and everything loomed like you would expect. And then this dial is a really, really nice matte. You can see I'm going to tilt it slightly. It's a really, really nice matte black color, not glossy, so it helps everything stay quite readable. And it really does stand out as a contrast against uh, these chrome indices here. Uh, that are this beautiful high polish that of course when they're going to catch black reflections um, They're going to be a little bit harder to see but as you can see once you start getting some reflection in there. It, it definitely uh, stays quite legible so um, as far as the connectors go, these are actually push pins. They're just directional. There's no collar system, but they look like new pins to me anyway, to my eye. Uh, they're actually quite sturdy and they're not like your typical split pin. So I was really impressed with that. Well, I'll definitely get into more details uh, in the full review though, um, and also probably do a comparison versus the original bracelet. So uh, let's actually go ahead and get this piece on wrist. Okay, as you can see on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, this thing works just about perfectly right there at that nice sweet spot, just a hair under 40 millimeters. But because of the dial ratio and that inner slide bezel, it's uh, you know, it, it's just a compelling package and, and it's really quite balanced. And then even if you get it up close, get you might get a little lens distortion, you know, from that kind of wristy uh, angle there, but it doesn't look oversized uh, at all because the dial space is so well proportioned, filling everything out. Um, but really wears nicely, and as you can see, the slightly thicker um, appearance there is is really nothing. I mean, especially since the watch already wears really beautifully, as you would expect from a Seiko. Uh, with those really beautiful sloping lugs that just wrap around the wrist. Uh, you're really not going to notice any uh, differences on, while it's on there. So really beautiful. Let's go ahead and give you the fine angles there. And then you can see there is still a bit of a space here on the buckle, but it doesn't really bother me. Um, I feel like it's one of those things where people kind of can make... Uh, a mountain out of a molehill. Um, it's something that plenty of people have worn the, a bracelet like this before and really haven't had any issues with it. Uh, to, to resolve that, I guess if Seiko was to actually put um, the 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 holes here a little bit further back, it would set this down more. But then it would probably also uh, scrape the link a little bit more and then depending on where you actually place this will actually depend on how the gap is going to affect you. I like to always have my bracelets offset with the buckle uh, more to the to the top if I'm looking at the with the uh, logo up. So basically the higher it is over here and I think that actually does help with uh, flattening this out versus if you were to have it back here it might wear uh, a little bit higher with more of a gap but as you can see it's really nothing uh, to be worried about where it's really nice love it on my wrist i've been wearing it pretty much non-stop i do try to rotate other watches in of course um especially when i have a lot uh, to review which i do currently um but yeah this thing is just like you'd expect from any uh, Seiko Alpinist, where it's really great on the wrist. And it's nice to have that factory bracelet option so readily available versus being something you have to buy separately at an additional cost. Uh, so let's go ahead and set up some low light and loom shots and uh, some closing thoughts. Okay, let's go ahead and hit the lights. 
So as you can see, just like you'd expect from Lumabrite, although they are in really small application there, still glows really quite bright, quite green, very, very vibrant. Um, and it's just one of the things that make this watch really just so extremely fully loaded. Um, but while we have that here, let's go ahead and also get some low light transition shots because you're not always going to be out, you know, in direct sunlight out in the middle of an open space and whatnot. So it's good to kind of get an idea of what this is going to render like in more natural lighting situations, also in some harsher lighting. Um, so you can see down here now, I'm going to have the lighting uh, really, really hitting that brushing and polishing a little bit harder so you can see some of the imperfections at least if there were any i think this thing is finished to a really nice standard um i'd say even it feels you know it could just be uh, in my head maybe because i'm still in the honeymoon phase here but it does feel a bit nicer um than my other alpinists but you know of course the, with the matte black dial there's not too much for you guys to really notice as far as the way the color is going to render because it's not really a lot you know a light catcher it's not going to be something that's going to play with light too much uh, but the nice thing is you can kind of get an idea of the way that legibility is going to be as it kind of transitions through different lighting conditions okay all right guys so um you know to kind of again uh, just touch on this. This is probably a little bit longer than I planned it to be almost like a full review But maybe uh, tapering off of some of my typical rambles um, on the wrist You know, it definitely has that sporty yet compact wear as far as model variants go There's uh, the SBDC 091 which is basically the green on uh, brown crocodile leather Which is is kind of the spiritual successor to the Saab 017 and then you also do have an SBDC 089 which is the ivory dial with silver indices and then a black leather strap um, with an ivory contrast stitch which looks really really great it's one that I was also eyeing personally and then you also have the SBDC 093 which is an online exclusive which has a more creamy dial with uh, the gilt um uh indices and whatnot and accents and then you also do it does come with a vintage style uh green leather strap now as far as comparable models go uh i'll actually be doing uh, some comparison videos here kind of dedicated to that but uh to, off the top of my head i really think you know zen 556 as far as something that's extremely capable um, and also quite iconic. Uh, then you, I, you also think Glycine Airman 18 because of the dual crowns and whatnot, uh, similar scale, um, and then also quite water resistant. Um, now you also have some newcomers like uh, the Notice Duality, which I reviewed on the channel and I do plan to actually pick one up uh, once the white dial uh, variants come back into stock. So I uh, look forward to also doing uh, throwing that into comparisons. And then uh, if you think about it too, the Boulder Expedition, it's a little bit bigger, beefier take on something like this. But again, it follows a very similar formula where it's kind of that uh, do everything go anywhere field watch that also has a very nice depth rating. Um, so really the bottom line here is this thing is a bona fide classic. This is not a future classic. This is a classic already, right? The, the Alpinist line, especially now in the US after the, uh, you know, the US only blue limited edition, it really showed the real power behind uh, just the Alpinist brand and the Alpinist logo and, and kind of what this formula stands for and the sweet spot that it represents within the market. So um, it's definitely been improved and still even a value, I think, at MSRP. So if you do end up getting it around 750 I think it's still quite a deal. Of course, other dealers are marking them up just so they can kind of retain uh, stock so they're not selling out as quick. So you can kind of take that either way. Hey, either they're taking advantage of the high demand, but at the same time, it's supply and demand, right? And also they do give people who might be willing to pay more an opportunity to buy them faster and not wait for restocks. Like where I bought this from, which is Sakura watches, which have the best prices. Uh, so definitely check out the links below. I'll leave in there. They're actually planning to get these restocked by the end of this month, guys. So this is filmed in January. They're planning to have these restocked in January at the end of the month. So definitely follow the links uh, for the best price 
pricing because you're picking these up uh, in the 600 range versus seven, eight, 900. So I think that's really uh, a great uh, bargain when you really think about it. Plus with the new movement, 70 hour power reserve, I mean, you really can't go wrong. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, also let me know if there's anything you want me to throw in as far as the comparisons go, anything to focus on, uh, cause I will be comparing this model, uh, versus the older, um, Alpinist, the last two iterations, which would be the U S special edition blue dial. And then also your very classic, um, you know, Sarb, uh, zero one seven, the green and gilt, and then I'll also be comparing do another comparison video versus the Zen five, five, six, maybe even the Glyson airman notice duality throw all that all in there. Um, so there, there's, there's going to be quite a few things and then maybe a, a really in-depth full ramble review, maybe even a shorter review um, with uh, more specs flying across the screen and, and a couple more stills and some macros or something like that. So again, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you like the video, please do a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks guys.